In this episode of the RV Small Talk Podcast, we're going to talk about places that don't suck and things that do bite. Ew. Yeah. And <laughs> then after they bite, they kind of suck. I don't know. Ew. So here's the issue here is the one of the biggest things everyone complains about, whether they like camping or whether it's the number one reason that keeps them from camping, is bugs. And the scariest bug for many other... Okay, that's weird because it's, people are scared of spiders. And all kinds and scorpions. So maybe those are the scariest bugs. But the or one snakes. The, or they're not bugs. I don't know. Have they seen these? They're not bugs. Okay. Have they seen these things? Okay. What is it? It's a tick. Oh, it's the tick. And and I gotta say, ticks scare me probably more than even spiders and scorpions. They scare me because when they bite you, it can be dangerous yeah. and you don't always know it. Right. You know if a scorpion bites you. So Let's talk about prevention, how to get rid of them once they're on you, know, all the tick stuff. Let's get let's let's scratch this itch. All right. Ugh. Ugh. If we have to, <laughs> if we have and to. And then we'll round out this episode with talking about some really neat places that don't suck. Yeah, we found some cool places to camp that maybe people hadn't thought of. I don't know. We just wanted to share. Hit it, Clint. Now, look here, y'all. We are from the RV Small Talk <laughs> podcast. We record at this wonderful studio at Princess Craft RV here in little old Round Rock, Texas. That's just a little bit north of Austin, shy of Georgetown. Now, let, let me lean into this just a little bit. What we do here at Princess Craft and at the RV Small Talk podcast is we talk about lightweight trailers, truck campers, and the people, places, and gosh darn adventures go right along with them. And you can take your boo boo, your boo hoo, and your who's who with you on those adventures so let's dive right on in i am your favorite cow poke because i mean who doesn't like to poke a cow except for don't poke the back end they kick you and then they like stomp you to the ground i've been there once or twice maybe thrice at any rate i am clint and let's introduce my other two compadres moo that, <laughs> that's not gonna age well i tell you <laughs> I'm Lindsay. <laughs> and I'm PJ, and I don't know what's happening here, but I say let's record a podcast. Well, you heard it here, folks. So let's get on like the favorite tumbleweed that crossed the pit. Did anyone ask why the tumbleweed crossed the road? Let's talk about ticks, baby. Let's I, talk about you and me. I, 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 I start to Stop. develop. One. I think we were so excited about talking about ticks, we just took a left turn. <laughs> and avoided it all costs. Avoided cost. it all. Okay, Maybe. so ticks. Ticks, you find them on your dogs, you find them on cats, you find them on your livestock, and sometimes you find them on your kids and your own person. Are you going to have that accent this whole podcast? It's going to be hard to get rid of, I do tell you that. <laughs> I do declare. <laughs> Okay. Well, well it, it makes ticks a whole lot more interesting, right? Does it? <laughs> it adds validity. It makes it sound validity. like it just came in from from the from the range, from the pasture. The back forty. The back forty, the front forty, the side forty, the up forty, the down forty. Did y'all know there's like so many different types of ticks? Yeah. I had no idea. Yeah, I get this one in my left eye when I point at my right eye. <laughs> <laughs> Well, folks, you might just want to mosey on to the next station because this is going to be a rough one. <laughs> Clint was up all night. He is absolutely delusional at this point. No, this is just you. It's true. No, no one likes having a sick kid at home. It messes with your sleep cycles. It makes you turn country, apparently. I have you know I'm going right back to my roots. Ruts? Yeah. Obviously, we're all making our plans. We're seeing all of our friends go out and about. They all have dogs out or out hiking and all that. And we know, we know, we know that ticks can carry things. And that's what makes them so scary to me is you. Right. They can be on you for the longest time and you never know. And then you find them. You think, oh, my gosh, I'm doomed because they're they're carriers of various things the the big one that comes to everyone's mind is Lyme disease there's a few others one of them is super interesting when we hit the, what they can carry it's it's just interesting and just makes me sad so ticks ticks are all of them dangerous that's what i want to know 
Are all of them dangerous? Just because you have a tick yeah. doesn't mean that you have the possibility of getting some dreaded disease. Um in my reading, I mean, I didn't see anything that said that, you know, your demise is imminent. Well, that's good to know. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, I guess my question is, yeah. do are are all ticks capable of carrying diseases? Um, I still don't know the answer to that. But I will say that what I did read is the things that ticks carry tend to be bacterial. And okay. so if you find a tick on you and you safely remove it and whatever, and you clean with soap and water or something like that. And again, we can get into how to handle a tick bite, but mm -hmm. jumping ahead a little bit is watch that spot and, and just take note of how you feel. And if you feel any symptoms whatsoever uh, of, you know, whether it be just being weird off headache, uh, rash or something like that, you immediately go and have it addressed and you're likely to have zero problems in a matter of days. Mm -hmm. um, but it's when you let things go a long time and in particular with Lyme disease, it can be hard to diagnose. And that's the sort of thing as, as you two know, it can set in. And by the time you, you're diagnosed and figure out what it was, it's, it's done long term lifetime damage. Right. And it's a bacterial thing just because you have a stupid tick. Right. Stupid tick. Well, what ticks do we have in Texas? Do you know? Well, I'm guessing uh -huh. the Lone Star tick is one that we have here in Texas. You know, I didn't actually print the map. I have uh, I have from the CDC a whole lot of information. I will say, if you're interested in knowing how everything tick related, then the CDC website is deep, y'all. Pages and pages of tick information so i'll include that in the show notes but they have maps on there of which ticks are found where and they also keep up statistics on the yearly tick counts and tick how do you know reported tick bites as well and they break it down very much demographically by where you are who you are your age and all that so again i didn't print that out for us for this recording, okay. but if you want to know what tick is exact, exactly what ticks are where and how many bites are being reported in a given season, then the CDC website is tops. Ticks are pretty much all over the U.S. Uh -huh. um, a lot of them up north, I, I see. So let's talk about diseases that ticks carry. All right. Uh, Lyme disease. We talked about that. Yep. Um the first 48 hours uh, after the tick bite is crucial with Lyme disease. Mm -hmm. Alpha gal. Okay. That's the freaky one, by the way. So uh, what is that? Which is something that the Lone Star tick does carry. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Their uh, bite can trigger the immune system to go on defense and overreact to it. So it can basically make you allergic to meat That's, forever. Yes. Forever. Yes, that's what's so freaky Forever. about it. Forever. Allergic to meat? Yeah, ticks out there making vegans. <laughs> what? Wait. Yeah. Someone, some ticks are out there making vegans. Some vegan out there is going, I have a plan. I didn't choose this. <laughs> <laughs> Release the ticks. <laughs> oh, my gosh. We may lose a few, but the all who remain will not eat meat. All right. Y'all are going to help me with these pronunciations. Uh, or. <laughs> or, or, or we like, won't Erlichia Yeah, yeah Erlichia That's humans and dogs Also Lone Star ticks Are the primary source of this mm -hmm. uh, Symptoms include fever, headache, fatigue Muscle aches And it typically occurs within one or two weeks Following a tick bite yeah. Which if you don't know that you got bit Two weeks later you're like mm, I feel bad Okay. But then does it cause any permanent damage or do you get better? It doesn't look like that's a permanent damage one. Uh, babesia? Oh, yeah, babesia. Also called pyroplasm. This tick introduced pathogen can cause malaria-like symptoms mm. and is very much malaria-like in action that infects your red blood cells. Oh, yikes. I wasn't scared of ticks before, but I'm getting there. Well, I grew up with that cartoon when I was younger in the 90s. The blue guy, the guy ran out, around in a blue outfit called the tick. Yeah. Yeah. Why was, was, really was that ever? The little like, tiny head yeah. thing. And then they made it like an actual show yeah. for a second. 
Yeah, it was yeah. ridiculous. And you know what? I wasn't scared of him at all. No, he didn't look anything like these, though. Well, the next thing on our list is Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever. And this that one is, is one that everyone yeah. is afraid of. Mm-hmm. So because that one can be fatal. It says if you mm-hmm. don't get treated for it by the fifth day after the bite, the disease is highly fatal. Yeah. Yeah. And so, again, as all the reading I've done quickly, obviously, it looks like what they carry is typically is bacteria, not viral. And so you have a little bit of time, which you're probably going to end up as a regimen of uh, antibiotics to fight these things. And you always want to follow the directions on antibiotics and use the whole regimen. Don't say, hey, I'm feeling better. I'll just save these three or four last pills until. Yeah, people do that all the they time. They do all the time. Okay. Yeah, don't do that. And don't share. Don't share. <laughs> Pacific Coast Tick Fever. It's painful, debilitating. Uh, both dogs and humans can get it. And mm. there's tularemia. Tularemia. No, it's sing it. Tularemia. No, no, no. It's like like Tulalula Lula. Oh. T- also called oh. rabbit fever or deer fly fever. This mm-hmm. rare infectious disease typically attacks the skin, eyes, lymph nodes, and lungs. And it's oh, a bacteria, yeah. mm-hmm, just mm-hmm. like you said. Yeah. The southern tick associated rash illness also comes from the Lone Star tick. Obviously, the tick that we have here in Texas <laughs> right. has all the things. And that is kind of like a circular rash, kind of like how we teach people to look for Lyme disease. I say mm-hmm. we like I teach people, but I right. don't. Right. Um, but it's less consequential. It looks like it's just a just a rash. So not all ticks are necessarily, you know, spotting humans as their number one source of nutrition. But some of them will gladly look at to us as a first option but they're usually looking for other mammals or what have you even birds you'll find them on birds and whatnot um so one thing i learned and i'm gonna have to find where i read it but it's one thing i think is on the cdc website like how do they hunt if you will it's it's crazy so some of the symptoms you should look for whenever you've you've removed a tick from your your body or you know someone else um do y'all ever did y'all ever hear that country song from the early 2000s or mid or early 2010s, whatever, that basically was a song all about, I want to check you for ticks? What? Yes. <laughs> right up there with, I think your tractor's sexy or something. Yeah, probably, probably the same Wait, guy. Wait, but where does trailer double wide queen fit, fit in, in all the, um, uh, Queen of the double wide is what you need to say. Queen of the double wide. <laughs> We've had country songs go in today. Oh, yeah. So anyway, so some of the common symptoms that you want to keep an eye out once you've taken a tick off of yourself or someone else is fever and tr- chills, obviously. Uh-huh. Um, aches and pains. So you, you think about it. Hey, my kind of like a little achy. My fluish, joints. Yeah. Fluish. Yeah. Absolutely. You, especially if the two of those it probably really feels fluish. Mm-hmm. So feel what do fluish. you do? Just go to the doctor and say. I'm feeling a little weird and I got bit by a tick. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's pretty much absolutely. it. Absolutely. <laughs> Please do that. <laughs> Please okay. go to the doctor. Yeah. Yeah. And then also check for uh, Lyme disease um, and, and make sure that you can show the doctor, obviously, you know, show them where the tick bite was because they're going to want to see if there's a spread, if there's a kind of a hot zone, kind of something or other. Another thing I've seen people do is if they remove a tick from their body, they will put it in a, in a plastic baggie. Can they like test them like they do bats? I do wonder that. I w- I would imagine they can because it's bacteria. So you can test it for bacteria. Yeah. I mean, so there's that. So if you're feeling anything after you've taken a tick off, go in quickly because why put yourself through that? Okay. So as, we, as we're going through this on the ticks, um, some ticks actually have a lifespan of upwards of three years. What? And they need to find a host to suck their blood for every phase of their life. So every time about they're about to, suck to your blood. yeah. So so every time that they're going to go from one version of themselves, like from from nymph from larva to nymph, and then nymph to adult, um, they have to find a host, and they need to gorge themselves on blood. Okay. It's wild. Yeah, and I never would have thought that a tick would last that long. I don't think of insects Three usually years. lasting that long. And they find like 
people or animals by their breath, by your body odor Mm -hmm. or body heat, moisture and vibration. So they're kind of like T-Rexes. Just if you're silent, they can't find you. So you can't hike silently. Yeah, that's it's and not. You can't, that's you, not. You can't it. fix your body heat. That would be a problem. <laughs> well, well, if you fix it, then who cares if a tick gets on you? <laughs> that's right. Yeah, that's right. And, and if you're hiking, you're probably breathing pretty good and creating some body odors. Yeah. I okay. Mean, so, but when I think of like a little bug that's in the woods that's waiting that doesn't jump and doesn't fly, right? I think of them like jumping, yeah. right? Because they like like uh, like lice, you know? They kind of hop off of things. They hop onto mm-hmm. your clothes. Or they hop fleas, into your hair, which are crazy fleas jumpers. Jump. Ticks don't jump. They're so slow. I mean, I, how they do have they to get crawl on your body? Up on you? Yeah, yeah. They literally okay. So they have. So where are they hiding? They have. They, they have just eight everywhere? legs, right? Mm-hmm. So they grab onto a leaf mm-hmm. with like two or three pairs of their legs, mm-hmm. and then <laughs> they, they and then they reach out with their first pair of legs and literally stay there. Yeah, they like flag out. And then what? when they're trying to yes. hitch a ride, they, they like hike they up their skirt on, on one leg yeah. and, 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 and they, stick out their thumb. Yeah. And they say, Hey, big boy. And they just get <laughs> right. I'm trying to whistle. I can't. Yeah. <laughs> and then they just, they just hold like that. And then when you walk by, they're like, wow, really? Yes. That's how a tick gets on you. Yeah. They can't jump. They can't. It's crazy. They're not super fast. They just kind of like. And they and they hang out on the the tall grasses, the tips of tall grasses, and on everything that that you just brushes up against your shins or, or your legs whenever you're walking, and you pay no attention to, like like she said, you they're just hanging out with two hands out, just ready to grab on, and then what they do is they find uh, an easy passageway. And so one of the one of the things that they tell you to do is if you're going to be in tick areas, is mm-hmm. tuck in. You wore clothes, you mm-hmm. know, tuck in your shirt, tuck your pants into your socks and lace your boots up tight. You know, don't leave exposed skin. Don't make it easy for them. Because well, once they'll, they're they'll get up, they'll get in your ear. Uh-huh. They'll get it like they want that soft. Sure. Where the capillaries creases, are right yeah. next to or, or warm. And one place that, that kids easily f- find them is right in their belly button. Uh. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, this is not fun. Can we can we like wrap this up soon? So how do you get a tick off uh, of you? Well, you hear all the old wives tales where you, you try to basically suffocate it with putting Vaseline on it and just wait it out. Or you try to put like a heat source near it and it's like, like uh, put a match on it. Yeah. It I remember out. when our dog had ticks, we would light a match and then put it out and then put that on the tick's body and then they would let go and we'd pick it off. Yeah. Okay. I I hadn't actually ever experienced that or experimented with that, but the CDC and this other source, I wanted to send people to it is this clever hiker article. Um, it's, they lean largely on the CDC website when they put it together, but they wrote it really well and I liked it. So anyways, I will put the clever hiker article, but anyways, they say, you know what? The, just a good pair of tweezers and you just grab it. The tick just as close to the skin as possible. And you, and you don't like yank and you don't twist. You just, apply pressure upward and pull it out slowly you know like 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 you're pulling excalibur out of the stone (laughs) and they say to always use a tool and not your finger yeah because if it does have a disease you get it's bacteria yeah it's all over you so Uh get some kind of little tool pull the tick out yeah and if there's some left in there that didn't come out Mm -hmm. They said, try to get it with the tweezers or whatever you right. have. But if you can't just wash, leave wash, it wash alone. Yeah. Make sure the leave area is super clean. Mm hmm. Yeah. Um, and some people smish them with their fingers to be sure they pop like fleas. Yeah. Uh, but they say, do not do that. Of course, it just spreads more disease. Mm-hmm. So put it in a plastic bag and wrap it up and um, or you know, wrap it with some tape or mm-hmm. you can put alcohol on it or you can flush it down the toilet. Yeah. Just something to be sure it goes away and isn't in a position to survive. Sure. Sure. And that's another thing that this clever hiker said, you know, have that tweezer inside of a plastic Ziploc bag. That way, mm-hmm. if you do want to, if you need to feel the yeah. need to keep it with you in case you might feel, start feeling symptoms and need to take it to the clinic with you. It's all as a kit, basically. Yeah. And keep all the disease away from you. Mm-hmm. In mm-hmm. the bag, down the toilet, somewhere. Right. And if even if it's been there on you for a while and it looks like a plump raisin, don't. 
Don't hate it. Oh, oh, oh. This has been the grossest topic we've had in a long time. Well, only because we've made it that way. But anyway. I've enjoyed it. I, okay. I, <laughs> so, and, and again, the CDC website has a tit bite data tracker. So it's up to date on how people are reporting and clinics are reporting. And where the outbreaks are. So if uh-huh. you do get because bit, there are should you go to the CDC and type it in so they sure. have better data? Why not? Why not? I don't know Take that it picture. gets reported that way. I don't think so either. I think uh, it's actually reported by hospitals and clinics and all. Uh, yeah. Um, but they also have charts on uh, the the high seasons. And it looks like, you know, we're at the beginning of the ramp up into the high season tick season mm-hmm. um and then it also has a charts based on age groups who's getting bit and i and it looks like uh the zero through nine year olds are getting the most bites which well, makes perfect well because sense that makes sense they're closer to the ground they're touching everything yeah you know i was sitting here thinking i may never sit on a log again to take a rest when i'm hiking yeah. but i don't know it doesn't sound like maybe that's where you get all the ticks but they can't get you through your clothes right no, no, I mean, their little proboscis is not that long. They really want to be on your skin. And they want to be where all the dark People creases are. are. Oh. On yeah, your so skin. like on your dogs, it's they're always like at the inside of their legs. Or their ears. Mm-hmm. Or their ears. Yeah. Yeah, that's because that's where they like. So if they can't get, if you're all tucked in and they can't get past your clothes, you know, you might be able to brush them off. And when you take your clothes off, just oh, throw them another, in a dryer yeah. will kill them. If you put them in a dryer for 10 minutes. Yes. Because if you take them off and you put them in a pile and they sit there or you they throw them on the They're bed. They're going to go like this and crawl on somebody else. They crawl on your bed and put yeah. their arms up. So yeah. it's important for hiking clothes to go in the dryer for 10 minutes. And I'm glad minutes. you brought that up because that's in these articles as well is is put your clothes in the dryer for 10 minutes and, mm-hmm. and it completely just makes them useless ticks. Yes. Yes. <laughs> as, useful ticks. As, they, as useful as they start off. But also another recommendation is wear light colored clothes because it's so much easier to see them on your light colored oh, clothes. Oh, that's important. Um, so I never we, thought of here that. Here we are out here hiking in our all whites. You know? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know. Uh, it's probably cooler. And in Texas, that's a plus. Sure, sure. Um, so no surrendering to ticks. All right. So would y'all like to move on from the ticks? Yes, please. Can we please? Now that we know everybody's a little bit aware and give you a, a few things to look yeah. out for and just, just a reminder. You're coming up on tick season. Let's move on to the next thing. Lindsay, this next thing is your topic. Is it? Yeah, you you did the research on it. So, so take well, a, takes for a ride here. You know, we just gathered a list of some destinations, I guess, yep. for this summer. You know, everybody goes to, I don't know, where do people go? The the Tetons and they go to Disney World and they go to... Yellowstone. Those are the only two places I can think of right now. <laughs> Yellowstone, yes. Hey, so I wanted Grand to find Canyon. some... Yes, yeah, some... W- other places that okay. might not be as crowded, but still really fun to go summertime, kind of just getaways. Okay. Yeah, so this was spurred on by one of our previous podcasts where we were talking about theme trips and we found all these cool places. Right. We did find cool places. The, the problem with starting talking about cool places is there's way more cool places than you could possibly <laughs> talk about. It's true. That's the thing. America is a big place, y'all. Yeah. And well, so there's a lot of cool places. And well, so is Canada. Yes, Canada is cool too. And so is Mexico. Canada. But so what is your uh first cool place, Lindsay? I maybe maybe people have heard this before, but I've never heard of this place. It's called Anza Borrego Park in California. Mm-hmm. Have you ever heard of that place? I have not. Okay, cool. Well, they have um it's it's a lesser known place. It's very hot in the summer. Um, but it has slot canyons. You know, like uh, that, like that famous one where people take all the pictures. <laughs> that famous one where Wait, people that, take pictures. A famous canyon where people take pictures. No, like where? Okay, a slot canyon where it's like all the lines, like sedimentary rock. Like where it's too, like you're in between, like, like really two. narrow canyon. Yeah, with okay. all the lines, and then you take all the pictures. Yeah, I'm just messing with you. 
<laughs> I can only do this so many times. Okay. Everybody watch the video for this one. She, has, she's, she's having a little bit of a it fit. It has those, but nobody knows about them, so they're less crowded, but it's really pretty. Uh, also, it was the first dark sky park in California. Oh, that's cool. So wow. really good for uh, star watching. Yeah. And in the desert, it's kind of deserty, but all over the park, there's over a hundred humongous metal sculptures. So there is like what? a serpent that like goes in and out of the land and there's like big metal dinosaurs and they're all sculptures by this one person. I didn't write down his name, but really cool place. Okay, so what's the name of it again? Anza Borrego Park. And where in California is it? You know, California. You're just going to have to Google it. <laughs> so, so Anza Borrego or, or Borrego. Uh, Anza Borrego. No, we're probably doing it wrong. Yeah. Just, just, it's all right. Just okay. My second it. place is a place that. Yeah, yeah. Ogden. Yes. A little bit more well known, but I've always wanted to go to Ogden. I have a friend who lives in Ogden, mm-hmm. Utah, and she literally says it's the best town ever. Okay. Like the friendliest people, tons of stuff to do. There's hiking, biking, rafting kayaking there you have lakes on one side mountains on the other side yeah. it's just supposed to be gorgeous and it sounds like the, the it's little, good for the adventure seekers yeah like but the little like town community is supposed to be really cool with a bunch of unique shops and just friendly people i don't know it just seems like the happiest place on earth okay wait 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 someone actually has that thing branded that i know slogan. i know but it should be ogden utah okay all right <laughs> And by the way, Anza Borrego, I looked it up, is down by San Diego. But okay. did you see the sculptures? No, I uh, didn't. I just looked at the well, location. I thought it was on the, the so. main page. Okay. This next place is my favorite. It's, I don't know how to say it. Asatig. Oh, we looked at this up. Asatig yeah. Island. Yes. Okay. I don't know where that is. Oh, you're going to have to sing in this. Section. I mean, I knew, but I didn't write it down. But, Okay. You cannot camp on this island, but you can camp right off of this island. Like in the water? <laughs> Just drag it into the water. <laughs> no, it's like it's like next door to the island. But then there's a big old beach and there's wild horses. <laughs> no, wait a second. You can't camp there. So if you try to camp there, do they try to drag you away? Nay. They don't. Wow, <laughs> wow horses i didn't know there was such a thing as wild boom, horses boom, anymore boom. did you know Couldn't there was wild horses me away. did you yeah. know there yeah. are some wild yes. horses yes. am i just stu- like how do but I- this is delaware yes delaware and there's a beach with wild horses and you can camp and it just it i thought you could gorgeous camp. i bet they don't want well, you, you can can't you can't camp on the beach because it belongs to the horses but you can camp yeah. like over here and, and then and that stallion there. finds okay. you on his property after dark he's going to stamp you out okay mm. well, you cannot be his neighbor <laughs> he's, he's not going to drag you away he's going to I'll stamp you. All right. Mm-hmm. Little Compton, Rhode Island. It's <laughs> like straight out of? <laughs> Little Compton. Wait, wait. Compton, Rhode Island's on the way other side of the U.S. from Compton. It is. And it's charming. This is this is not the same Compton at no, all. No. It's a beach town. There's no grocery stores. There's no chain restaurants. It's quiet and calm. There's lighthouses wow. and museums. Man, they are about to get mad at you for quaint. bringing this up. And I know. But that sounds awesome. The, I would never think of going to Rhode Island it, for camping. It looks gorgeous and adorable. Is there parks there to camp at? Is yes. there like an RV park? Yeah, I, there's places to camp at all of these, except for Assateague Island. You have to like camp next door because... Because of the wild horses? Horses. Okay. Yay! <laughs> uh, Woodstock, Vermont. Another cute little town, but there's a lot of mountain biking, a lot of hiking. Mm, I hear there's a history there. No, different Woodstock. That Woodstock, that was Woodstock is in New York. New York. No, I was talking about the bird. Oh. <laughs> what? What? Huh? Snoopy. Yeah. Peanuts? Hmm? They're supposed, they're supposed to be beautiful. Why is everybody foliage, always beautiful picking flowers, on me? Uh, shopping, and like a lot of upscale fun farm to table restaurants. It's like, uh, uh-huh. it gave me like a Portland, but like, 
also 25 the other side years of the, ago vibe <laughs> also the other side of the u.s well, it sounds like it would be nice to go. Well, yeah. Well, are they all supposed to be in the same part of the U.S.? Well, well we could go northeast small town hopping. <laughs> okay, that's okay. I mean, really? I'm, I'm ta- I'm, this isn't a whole road trip here. This well, is just destination. <laughs> yeah, it's you like, just man, go to just one go of these touring. places. You don't go to all these places. Okay, what's the next one? Lindsborg, Kansas. Kansas? Yes, it's a Swedish We're not in community. Kansas anymore. Okay. It's Swedish? All Swedish. The buildings are all like, Swedish architecture that totally redeems it because didn't we didn't we give Kansas a hard time like, we always give Kansas yeah. a hard time so 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 this is a redeeming feature they have a Swedish community they do and they do like big Swedish festivals Dirty and Dirty events Bird. and Swedish food and like the whole town looks like Switzerland like no don't do that you just offended me and everyone else what Sweden and Switzerland are not the same okay the, the not whole the town same same <laughs> i misspoke the whole town looks like swedes <laughs> and um also i really like it because Lindsborg sounds like my name if i was a robot <laughs> so i put it on the list that Lindsborg. One, so the borg were actually a race in Star Trek. And so you're like uh, the, the Lindsay <laughs> Borg. I'm the Lindsay Borg. <laughs> That's in Kansas. I think if I go there and do that joke, though, they might not like it. Go try. But they may not get I'll it. I'll take my camera. Uh, Jerome, Arizona. Jerome. What's in Jerome? Uh, not a lot. <laughs> which, which might awesome. be exactly what you're yes. looking for. It's yes. like a, a cool... <coughs> ghost town you okay billion dollar copper camp yeah so basically they mined it all for copper and then they had a population of fifteen thousand. it went down to 50 mm-hmm. um but it is kind of a ghost town that have like little little restaurants and it's supposed to be super haunted so if you're into that kind of thing like Ooh. every place in the whole town like has their stories and yeah. there are specific ghosts that live in this building and then in this building um i feel like if i were one of the last like 500 people there and we had all this like it would be signed into your duties that if someone wants to, to you said duty yes <laughs> and this one's free so <laughs> That you have to have a ghost story. Yeah, you have to have yeah. a ghost story, and you have to defend the town's honor by making sure the people run off screaming. Defend, L- like defend like, our honor. Like if you live in a ghost town, you are required to make sure that people believe in ghosts by the time they leave. Yeah, it's a it's a really cool ghost town, uh, tourist attraction, historic sites, and the scenery is supposed to be beautiful out mm-hmm. there. Okay, Picket Wire Canyon, Colorado. I like it. I've never heard of this place, but they have the most and the biggest dinosaur tracks ever found in Picket Wire. In Picket Wire. So how did wait 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 wait? How does some place even get named Picket Wire? Um, Any ideas? Well, um, why would you call some place? Yeah, I want to live in Picket Wire. I mean, I don't know. What? Okay, now, I just had to ask is, in is case Pickett there was another somebody. name, or is it Wicket? Pickett or Wicket, the another name for like a fence post, and you can have these old white yeah, fence posts wired Pickett. together. So you have pickets wired together to make a picket wire. Maybe that's where they made picket wire. Maybe picket wire means something we don't understand. Maybe that's where they first found picket wire. We're making up that picket wire is actually something, is it? Hey, guys, they have dinosaur tracks and you can just hike to them. And they're like big and a lot of dinosaur tracks. There's a lot of RV parks. There's a lot of hiking. They have guided Jeep tours. Also, it's super duper hot. I'm glad it's guided Jeep tours because have you ever seen a Jeep trying to just go off on its own? They get lost and they go over boulders and under water. I I have seen those videos. They're like climbing stuff like, whoa, this is a novel idea. A guided Jeep tour makes sure those Jeeps safely get out there and back. I appreciate that. Well, I would appreciate it because I don't want to drive it. I just want to ride, see the scenery. Mm. Okay, I have one more. Can y'all contain yourselves for the best one? Oh, I don't know. I don't think we'll you try. Want me to. It's Desmet, uh-huh. South Dakota. 
Okay. It's the Ingalls Homestead. Oh. It's a camping destination. It is the actual homestead of the famous author, Laura Ingalls Wilder. And you basically get to camp and be on her land and learn how to churn butter and milk cows and go on wagon rides and wash clothes with a washboard and make corn cob dolls. And can you uh, cosplay there? Just show up looking like a pioneer. They don't have a pool, a hot tub. <laughs> they don't have a dog park. They don't have laundry facilities. But <laughs> you're having the whole experience. You can learn how to use a washboard. You just have to be ready for the rustic experience. I right? know. And I thought it went well. For, we just did the Oregon Trail on yeah. our Friday live. And yeah. so uh, I don't know. I was, just, that would be I was great in a, for a kids, country. Though, would sure. Sure. I, how much fun. There's lots of activities for kids. It just looked like a really cute thing to do. And it's in South Dakota. So like how beautiful. Right? Yeah. Like how right? bad could it be? You're in South Dakota. I hear they have ticks. Oh. <laughs> Laura Ingalls Wilder never got bit by a tick. Never. <laughs> anyway, those are my uh, weird and maybe not so uncommon. Maybe you guys have heard of them and I haven't. But I think I'm just going to go to each one of these places, not at the same time, because they're too far away. I like it. I went all over the U.S. I really like it. This is this yeah. is cool. So any any other wrap up stuff? Any, any other things on your radar before we call it for this episode? Wild, wild horses. Boom, boom, boom. <laughs> Drag me up. Hey, listen, I might not hit the pitch perfectly, but I'm better than Ronnie Millsap. You just keep, you just keep on. Oh, In 2022. that was mean. It's not mean. You're not 79 years old. I know. Okay, for reference, everybody, I saw, I saw something come on the TV, and it was Ronnie Millsap. I don't know, a fairly recent concert at the Grand Ole Opry. I just felt bad for him. And, and the, the the guy, I'm sure, puts on a great show still, but I don't think his in-ear mix, his monitor mix was right because I don't think you could hear the pitches of the music to match. I, just, I don't understand why they would even put that on TV. And I felt so bad for the old guy. I know. Because, because he has been a great... Singer, songwriter, performer, yeah. all these years. Long history. That's why. Yeah. yeah. That's why. You he can still just appreciate enjoy it. Enjoy yeah. his life. Well, so anyway. That's all I have to Is say. Is that all you have? Are you ready for the rally? No. Our Texas tiny trailer rally is coming up. Hey, and PJ, who that uh, will be fun. Who did you just hear from that might actually join us for that rally? Who? Oh, should I put this out there so soon? Well, we don't know if it's if it's a lock. We just heard that he Wait, thought I it sounded who? fun. Who? Who? Well, here's what I've, here's what I will tell. I you. can edit stuff if you need me to. Here's what I will who? tell you is that. Um, one of the new ambassadors, is that what you call them? Sure, sure. Why Rep- not? Yeah. For uh, Extreme Outdoors is John Ratzenberger. Yes. Ratzenberg? That, Ratzenberger. that guy. So it, it, I'm you, not sure. You know him as the postman from Cheers and as the voice yes. of, uh, of one fifth of all characters in Pixar movies. Yeah, that's right. He's in so <laughs> many Pixar movies. Does he camp? He has always camped and RV'd, and so he picked up his outdoors RV today, and he is traveling around, and I got a call that he might want to come to our rally. Cool. So, he is a ton of fun, from what I hear. I don't know him, Um, but that would be fun. Our rally is packed full. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, A hundred and some number of of trailers are going to be gathering together, and we're going to have uh, drinks and eats and dancing and we're gonna have eats all you hear kinds that? of things y'all gonna let me eat we're gonna let you eat well there's potlucks there's beer and wine tastings there's barbecue there's we got all kinds three days of fun so that's coming up and it's gonna be cool that's what's on my mind so Ooh, that I, just that. I am looking forward to this oh, he's back oh no you missed him didn't you say bye <laughs> <laughs> good night john boy <laughs> Everybody, we would like to thank you for joining us for this episode of the RV Small Talk Podcast. And we do hope that you would consider maybe 
going to your favorite podcast player and subscribing, following our podcast so that you might hear every last episode that comes up. I won't use this voice every time. I will find my normal voice when I can. Oh, thank God. Yeah. It's in my saddlebag. <laughs> I digress. <laughs> I keep trying to close my ears, but it just presses the headphones more <laughs> against my head. Don't forget that you can find our show notes all the way over on the interwebs at https semicolon slash slash rvsmalltalk.com. That's for every episode that we've put out there, show notes and links for everything we've talked about. If you want to join the conversation, we're over on Facebook. The the Facebook, the, the book Faces, this digital one that you can click on on the interwebs, on the, the whatevers. So go on over there and join our Facebook group. It's RV Small Talk community. And one last thing, we are on YouTube. Yes, all the tubes are about you when we're on there. <laughs> what? This is my favorite thing we've ever done on the podcast. <laughs> yes, but is anybody going to subscribe after no, this? We're, Do we there, no, we there is to tell nobody them. listening anymore. There are other we episodes. We could say anything. There are other episodes for people to like and subscribe to. <laughs> <laughs> you got to give me this one. <laughs> <clears throat> <clears throat> me, 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 me. I can't wait to get to my barbershop quartet practice. I like to sing all the do re me's. You're going to have to edit this. <laughs> yeah, well, you can feel sorry for me later. You're going to just be at home just giggling your ass off. <laughs> So, join us every Friday. That's right. Fridays, we like to get on the interwebs in front of a camera, light up the studio, turn on the microphones, gargle a little of our own spit. We don't we don't share, though. And what we do is we have a live stream. That's right. Up to, you know, 30 minutes to an hour of a live stream where you can talk and converse with us at 1230 Central Standard Time, even though we are nearly permanently on daylight savings time i don't even who knows how that works anyways 12 30 can someone please save me from myself yes. <laughs> I can't. just thank you guys for hanging in there Speaking and of hanging, if you're, you're still here, here there's no one if listening you, <laughs> if you are still here we apologize and we will see you next time where Clint will have a different accent. That's right. Clint will be Italian. Well, I'm just going to sign off and go boot scoot and boogie. <laughs> God, make it stop.